<laughs> you think I'll let you zone. Hey guys, here's another small recap. This time Blue Beetle with Scare War Part 1 and 2. We start in issue 1 with a recap of the previous Blue Beetles, Dan Garrett and Ted Cord, then the current Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes. We start with Jaime and Khajiit trying to stop the Mad Men, but Jaime doesn't know who they are until Ted informs them of who they are. A group led by Farley Fleeter, and Jaime wonders if that is even a real name. Blue Beetle looks like he's outnumbered until Nigia and Dynasties. The new Beatles are new to the hero gig after they tried to kill Jaime before, but they're trying to do better. Jaime decides to stop messing around and take out the Mad Men before it gets worse. After the battle, the trio bicker about keeping the collateral damage to a minimum and who was on what assignments, but Ted wants to talk to Jaime for a bit. Ted wants to know what is on Jaime's mind and he's worried that Nidia and Dynasties because they have so much power but none of the experience and Jaime just wants them to be the best heroes they can be. Later at Gloria's Diner, a bunch of people gathered because they don't want any aliens living in their town. Since the Horizon moved in, people have gotten hostile for no reason because the Horizon have not done anything wrong, but the people still try and start something. The Horizon welcome Blue Beetle because they are eating empanadas, but they don't know why the humans are mad at them. The Horizon want to retaliate, but Jaime stops them and says you'll just make it worse. So instead, they want him to protect them, but he can't remember one of the Horizon's names and Ule wants to know why he won't fight on their behalf. Jaime wants to know why she isn't staying near the ship, but Ule doesn't want to just be at the ship anymore. She wants to have new experiences, explore this planet, and meet new beings and creatures, and she will not let anyone stop her from doing that. After that incident, Zamara questions what she should be doing as they're supposed to be protecting the Horizon, but with her having a beetle grafted to her skin means she can't go back to Bloodhaven for a normal life anymore. While Jaime and his friends try and have some fun, we check in on Ted who has an intruder while fixing the bug. The intruder says that Ted is an imposter and that his tools won't save him. Ted tries a temporal lock, but the intruder just brushes that off and destroys the lab. The intruder asks if he has anything left to say and Ted says he's the blue beetle but the intruder says that he's just in the way and then leaves. The first issue is pretty cool because we get to see what Jaime is up to after the last mini where he's now in charge of a full blown beetle team and just trying to be a good mentor. We also see that like in the real world, humans don't always take well to change and try to scare what is different from them away. I wonder how Jaime will deal with that and we also see a new villain, the Blood Scarab, but enough rambling, let's get back into issue two of Scarab War. We pick up with Ted in the hospital. He'll make it, but he'll need time to rest. Jaime is there, but blames himself because he could have helped Ted if he called. He didn't have to fight alone. Jaime wonders why she isn't here. Ted's sister, she should be here. Victoria Cord is at Ted's lab looking for clues on who tried to kill her brother. One of Jaime's friends, Brando, works for Victoria as a secretary. She asks for cam footage and they find a figure which is grainy, but it's something. Ole is with her father building more homes and her father is saying that he is loving his time on earth but Ole isn't sure about the humans but her father says that humans are capable of great deeds but if anyone tries to harm his people he will protect them. The Rib Scarab starts attacking the Horizon saying that they came to destroy the False Scarabs and their creator. Nidia and Dynasties try to stop them. The new beetles are in over their heads and their power is being drained. Ole's father is seemingly killed by the Blood Scarab and just when hope is lost Jaime makes it, but the Blood Scarab says it's not time yet for them to fight and leaves. Jaime asks Oli if her father's okay and she said yes but no thanks to him and leaves. Jaime sees that the Blood Scarab used magic and the only way to see where they went was to visit an old ex. Overall this was a good introduction to people who saw the Blue Beetle movie. Jaime doesn't think he's ready to be a leader and a mentor to new heroes. He is not ready to ha not having his mentor around. It seems Jaime's trying to be everyone's hero but people are trying to make him choose a side like the Horizon because he's their protector. We still don't know what the Blood Scarab is after but I can see that they're trying to emulate Sentai story beats with evil versions of said heroes. 